If you're headed to Disney World soon, you know how much there is to plan, think about, and prepare for, but we are here to make your trip easier. Today, we've got a bunch of secret tips that are going to make your trip even more stress-free. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, it's AJ from Disney Food Blog. And you guys know that Disney is huge and it has enough visitors per day to fill a pro football stadium. So when you visit, you need every tip possible to help ensure you can avoid the stress and have a super easy trip. Now, believe it or not, there are a lot of things you can do before you even go to make sure to save yourself some stress while you're there. To avoid the crowds, avoid the headache, we're here to help you make sure that happens. So let's get started. First up, make your room requests before you go to Disney World. So Disney is all about being accommodating anytime that they can. This is especially true with resort rooms. So you'll be able to make requests ahead of time via online check-in, which has the added benefit of letting you skip the check-in desk when you arrive. When your room is ready, you'll receive a text with your room number and you can skip the lines right from the start of your vacation. So now when you make those room requests, you'll only be able to select two options for room requests on the online check-in form. So decide what's important to your group. These are things like a lower floor, maybe if you have mobility concerns or a higher floor if you're looking for a little more quiet, you can request near the lobby. You can request a large or small balcony. It's different for every hotel. And don't forget that some resorts have specific buildings you can request. So take a look at a map and see which buildings are closest to what you want. For example, at Pop Century, requesting a room in the 60s section will get you closer to the lobby, dining, and transportation. But it also puts you right by the main pool, which can be really loud. And a room in the 70s section may be a bit further from those locations, but you'll score a super quiet, possibly lakeside room that's perfect for midday naps. FYI, if you do have nappers, bringing along that white noise machine or iPad app can work wonders to block out the noises in the hallway and outside. Now, if you want to give yourself even more potential success with requesting a room, you'll want to call Disney. You'll want to call them five days in advance of your trip and call the hotel directly. That way you can get patched through to the front desk who can note your request for the room assigner. There's someone whose job is to assign rooms to people and they can get your message or your note over to the room assigner that there's a specific thing you want, whether it's a specific floor, a specific group of rooms, close to the lobby, etc. That's another added way that you can potentially get your request granted. So there's lots of different avenues to go through. Back in the day, they used to say you should fax your request to the room assigner as well. I'm not sure how much that works anymore, but hey, you can always try it. Now, remember, room requests are never guaranteed. So if you want to guarantee a specific room, you can go for an upgrade. So Disney offers certain upgraded rooms as bookable categories to guarantee you get exactly what you want from your room location. These include preferred rooms that'll be closer to the lobby, dining, and transportation. Note that some standard rooms will be in the same building as a preferred room, so you might get lucky and end up with the location, but not the price tag. And the same goes for room views, especially at Animal Kingdom Lodge, where if you want to be sure you can see those animals from your room, you need to book a Savannah View room. But there are several other view levels for all the Disney resorts, whether you choose a garden view room, a standard view room, or a water view room. Now, here's a special tip. In a lot of the hotels that have lake views, if you book a water view room, you could very well just get a view of a fountain versus the lake or Seven Seas Lagoon, for example. So if you specifically want a lagoon view room, you need to call Disney ahead of time and let them know I'd rather have the lagoon view rather than just a pool or a fountain because when they say a water view room, it can literally be just a fountain. So make sure you call Disney and make those requests. Those are really important and they do try to grant them. But the only thing you can actually pay for is a water view. So the other requests will all be not guaranteed. But all Disney resorts have specific room upgrades that you can pay for, so you'll want to look into those as well. Okay, next thing, take care of rentals ahead of time. If you don't want to haul a stroller through the airport or in your car, consider renting. There are tons of stroller rental companies around Orlando that cater to Disney guests. Now, these companies drop off your stroller before you arrive and will pick it up after you leave. Note that some rental companies have a deal with Disney where they can actually leave your stroller with guest services at your resort or with bell services at your resort. You definitely want to find a stroller company that can do that because you don't want to 
have to set up a specific time to meet your stroller rental company. You just want it to be there when you get there. So make sure you check with the stroller rental company that they can just leave it at Bell Services and you don't have to meet them specifically. That's a huge hassle. Now you can get a single stroller for anywhere from around $40 to $80 for an average stay and a double for about $10 more. And you can often get early bird discounts for renting far in advance. Now renting in the parks is definitely an option, but it can be more expensive. It costs about $15 per day for a single, $31 for a double. Plus you can't bring those strollers to the bus or back to your resort. And they're kind of hard and uncomfortable for your kids as well. But if you know you don't need a stroller, if you have an older kid and you know you don't need a stroller every day, or you know you don't need a stroller on the way back to the hotel, then keeping that in mind that you can just grab one at the parks if needed. If your kid is kind of flagging that day, then you can go ahead and grab it at the parks. Now Disney has been trying out test programs with way more comfortable strollers, but the typical Disney stroller is hard plastic with very little storage. There are also lots of companies that offer the same service with cribs and other kitty essentials, as well as companies that cater to wheelchairs or ECVs, which are electronic convenience vehicles and you can rent from those companies as well. So depending on what you need, a crib, an ECV, a stroller, set up those rentals ahead of time before you get to Disney and make sure those companies can deliver directly to your resort and leave the product there so you don't have to meet them specifically. Next tip to make your Disney World trip much easier, measure your kids before you go. So get a measuring tape and measure their height. Put their shoes on that they'll be wearing at the parks and see how tall they are. Now Disney posts all their height requirements for rides online, so you'll know ahead of time if Space Mountain isn't in the cards for this particular trip. And checking before you go can help weed out what younger kiddos may not be able to ride and avoid some serious disappointment on vacation. There's nothing worse than waiting in that long line, using up a fast pass, getting to the front and your kid is not tall enough. Now remember, don't try to cheat the system. The height requirements are there for a reason, your kid's safety. A two minute long ride is not worth the risk of putting them in danger. So this is a tip from the cast members. If your kid is just at the right height and you're worried they won't make the cut, have them hold their arms above their heads. It helps them stand as tall as they can so you can be sure without any sneaky tiptoe action. Now if your kid is too small, take advantage of rider switch. Everyone who is tall enough be able to ride while one person waits with the kids who aren't tall enough yet. And the best part, Rider Switch allows up to three guests on each pass, so older kids will be able to ride twice. Next thing to make your trip much easier is to set up your My Disney Experience in advance. My Disney Experience is crucial for pre-planning your trip. You'll choose your magic bands, reserve your fast passes, book your dining, lots of things that are incredibly useful in the parks, and you don't want to have to be messing with this stuff when you're on property in Disney World wanting to ride some rides. So you'll want to make sure all of that is together and done and sorted out well ahead of your trip. You can set it up before you even book your hotel. So make sure everyone in your family has a profile. Make a profile and pick an avatar for each person. This can be really fun for the kids and start to get them involved in the trip planning. And adults will have to manage accounts for children under 13. Once you guys all have your profiles, make sure to connect with friends and family. So everybody that you want to be able to make fast passes or dining reservations for, make sure they are connected to your account as a friend or family so that you're going to be able to make their plans for them. You can link all those users so that you can make plans for them ahead of time. Now make sure everyone with an account logs in to make sure they're connected and once connected users can adjust plans for the whole group. Now planning is much simpler when one person's in charge of all the advanced dining reservations, fast passes, and special events. So pick a captain. That's probably you if you're watching these videos. <laughs> so pick a captain to be in charge of planning all that stuff. Makes it much easier. And also again make sure this is all set up before choosing fast passes. So check this before 60 days out of your trip at a Disney resort or 30 days out for all the others. Make sure you know which rides you want to grab a fast pass for before your window opens because rides and times go fast, especially during busy seasons. And you may have better luck securing those popular rides, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Flight of Passage, Slinky Dog Dash, if you start your fast pass at the end of your vacation and work backwards because most people will start with their first day, so you'll likely see more open fast pass windows on the last days of your trip at that 60 days out. 
Next tip that's gonna make your Disney World trip much easier, don't follow the crowd. So when you're entering the parks, each entrance has a lot of lines open to get in, but typically people will file in from their transportation and line up right after each other, forming a couple of really long lines, and then a bunch just a few feet over that aren't as long. So just walk to the other end, walk where people aren't, <laughs> and line up over there, and you'll likely find empty or at least shorter lines if you just walk a little bit further. Nobody likes to walk any further than they have to. So if you do, then you're gonna benefit. And remember, cast members are great indicators. They usually hold their arms up when they have an empty line. And keep in mind that the entrances have two scanners at each line, so you can go around the person in front of you scanning their magic band if the scanner behind them is free. So if you're on transportation, especially on the monorail, guests tend to file in right to the middle of the monorail, leaving the ends of the cars practically empty. So at busy times, particularly near park close for Epcot or Magic Kingdom, cast members will direct the flow to empty cars, so watch closely for them to show where to go or move down on your own and get slightly lower crowds, and maybe even a seat. Another crowd avoidance rule, take a break when the parks are the busiest, so most guests will arrive after 10 a.m. and the parks stay really busy until dinner time, but if you stay post fireworks, crowds will thin out considerably, so buck the trend, hit the parks early and stay late. Go back to your hotel in midday so that you can take a break, swim in the pool, take a nap, get a nice resort lunch, where nobody goes because they're all in the park, so you'll be the only one at the resort restaurant at that time. <laughs> so it's a really nice sort of relaxing afternoon. Now, another option is to hit the parks early and then grab brunch. So several locations offer this hybrid menu. It's way cheaper than dinner, but more substantial than standard breakfast fare. And Grand Floridian Cafe and Wine Bar George have some of our favorite brunches, so go check them out. Oh, also Homecoming in Disney Springs has great uh, brunch as well. And here's another special tip. This one's a secret tip. I don't know if it'll make your trip easier, but it'll make it a lot more fun. If you time your reservation right at buffets, you can be there while they swap over from breakfast to lunch. So that means you get breakfast items and lunch items. So you get to have two meals for the price of one. Maybe you guys don't care about that, but to me, that's kind of cool. Then I get to try a little bit of everything. Um, so we did this recently at Tusker House at Animal Kingdom. Got to have a full breakfast and a full lunch in the same period. Got to try lots of their different food items. So that was pretty cool. All right, next tip to make your Disney World trip easier, use technology to your advance. There's plenty of ways to hack your way to a simpler vacation, and a lot of those are on your smartphone, so be sure to bring backup chargers so you don't ever lose your battery on your phone. Okay, so first bit of technology, keep an eye on the weather. Florida is known for those pop-up thunderstorms, and it's more than likely you're gonna experience at least one on your trip, so if you're prepared, you can use those storms to your advantage. Most people are not prepared for the weather, and wait times typically fall dramatically with a long enough rain shower. So bring all your ponchos, and if the rain appears, pop on your ponchos and keep rolling. Ride all those rides that usually have super long lines. Be sure to keep a weather app handy on your phone. We like using AccuWeather, and it shows the forecast by the minute so you know just how long you have to get somewhere dry. Also, skip the lines with mobile order. We can't stress enough how much we love mobile order. If you're not using it yet, what are you doing? Mobile order is available at most quick service and snack locations. Just check My Disney Experience. And you can review the menus from anywhere in the park, place your order, then you, when you arrive at the location, tap I'm here in My Disney Experience and your order will be prepared. So find the mobile order sign, then just walk up and pick it up, avoiding the long lines and stress. And this works with the Disney Dining Plan so you can redeem quick service credits and snap credits. But note, if you're using gift cards, you'll have to go through the regular line to pay. But something else to note, you cannot book your mobile order meal until that restaurant officially opens in the park. So don't try to book your lunch at like 7 a.m. It's not gonna work. You have to wait till that restaurant actually opens. Then you can book your mobile order meal. And the next way to use technology to make your trip easier, keep an eye on wait times. Don't waste your time walking across the park. You can see the wait times for all the attractions right in My Disney Experience. You can also get directions in the app so you can get the shortest route. So if lines for Rock and Roller Coaster, Expedition Everest, Test Track, Millennium Falcon are still pretty long, you might still want to head over and check out the single rider line. Oftentimes these will be dramatically shorter than the standby line and your party will get split up, but you'll spend a lot less time waiting. You might even be able to ride twice in the time it would take for you to stand in the standby line. 
So by making a few small adjustments and planning ahead, you can really make a huge impact on your Disney trip and make things a lot simpler. You can save time, get on more rides, or just make your family happier overall, which of course makes sure that you have a better vacation overall. We want to help you make the most of your vacation, and these tips are going to get you there. So thank you guys for listening, and thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments your super secret tips to make your Disney World trip much easier. Or what do you do ahead of time to make sure that things go more smoothly on your vacation? We'd love to hear in the comments. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.